The Buffalo crime family operated for many years and could dodge the police's involvement in their activities until 1903. It became strong when the FBI discovered that Magadino had $500,000 hidden in his son's attic. How the Buffalo crime family gave a hard time to the NYPD. The Buffalo crime family is also known as the Magadino crime family or the New York crime family. Angelo Palmieri was the first mafia boss in Buffalo in the early 1900s. It was founded in 1910, 112 years ago. The Buffalo crime family was founded by Angelo, also known as Buffalo Bill in Buffalo, New York. The Buffalo crime family was associated with criminal activities such as extortion, bookmaking, drug trafficking, loan sharking, gambling, racketeering, labor racketeering, conspiracy, and murder. They operate throughout western New York, Erie, Pennsylvania, and Hamilton, Ontario. This crime family was primarily stationed in the Buffalo-Niagara Falls metropolitan area and southern Ontario, with additional territory throughout upstate New York, western Pennsylvania, and Las Vegas. In 1931, Stefano Magadino became a member of the governing body of the Mafia known as the Commission. Stefano's cousin Joseph Bonino was also a member of the Commission. The Commission decided to make Stefano and the Buffalo crime family rule Ontario, Canada, while Bonino and Bonino crime family control Quebec, Canada. The Buffalo crime family was united until it was split into factions when Stefano's leadership was challenged in the 1960s. The reign of Stefano began to crumble when a sum of $500,000 was hidden in his son's attic in his funeral home. Although the FBI found the hidden $500,000, they also put a recording device in one of their cars. Let's discuss that later. He told his subordinates that he was out of cash and couldn't pay them, but they lost trust in him after they found out he was hiding money from them. People lost complete hope in his leadership, and there was an internal war among the people of the Buffalo crime family. This war continued even after Stefano died on 19th of July, 1974. However, the war ended after Joseph Tadaro Sr. became the Buffalo crime family's boss. Do not forget to add up to our subscribers by clicking on the subscribe button as we bring you a more educative video. When Joseph Totoro Sr. took over the leadership of the Buffalo crime family, its members have been operating within the Union Local 210 for years while avoiding the police or authorities. Apparently, they've been playing hide-and-seek with the police. But in 1989, the FBI entered the family when Tadoro Sr. and his son Joseph Tadoro Jr. were involved in gambling that caught the FBI's attention. The FBI discovered that they were involved in illegal acts such as labor racketeering, bookmaking, loan sharking, and drug trafficking. The FBI then planted a recording device in the car of Leonard F. Falzone, a member of the local union 210 after they found out that he was also in control of a loan sharking business owned by the Tadoras in 1988. However, the recording device could not be used as evidence against Tadoras' involvement in illegal activities. But the FBI got something as the device revealed the operations of the Tarina drug ring, which was doing very well as they sold more than $2 million worth of cocaine on the street yearly in the Buffalo area. The investigation into the Tarina drug ring also revealed that Tadora and Falzone had a cocaine pipeline from Vegas to Buffalo. This pipeline was used for other illegal activities, besides the transportation and delivery of cocaine. Tadora Sr. and Jr. were among the highest-ranking organized crime figures in New York. When the laborers local 210 realized that they had enough of the Buffalo crime family influencing them, they drove out Joseph A. Tadora and his associates. After they were driven out of the union, one set up a legitimate business. We'll discuss that in a bit. Joseph E. Tadora Sr. and his son Joseph A. Jr. with 16 others Names were brought up in a lawsuit for being in charge of the Local 210 for years. Totora Sr. was never a member of the Local 210, but Totora Jr. was once a manager. Old members began to cut ties with the crime family and its organization, whereas the younger people showed no interest in joining. Then the New York Lottery came and robbed them of their sources of revenue. Joseph Totora Jr. decided to get an honest means of livelihood by owning his pizzeria business. This meant that the pizzeria would be free of criminal activities, which means there will be no sale of drugs, gambling, or any business linked to the crime family. The cartels and unions they operated gave them power, but now that the NYPD is on the lookout for criminal activity, their business is on the low. While the Buffalo crime family operated for a long time before NYPD realized they existed, you may want to know about Anthony Provenzano. The latter is well respected in all five crime families. Why was he so respected? Find out in our video why Anthony Provenzano was so respected in the five crime families.